are you really a girl's girl? I mean, like, really? And I don't mean the ones that support or respect other women based solely off of popularity. Stay tuned to see if you have genuine or icky tendencies when it comes to other women. Welcome to Bombastic Views, the podcast where somebody might give these topics I talk about side eye, but we are so here for it. Okay, real quick, before we get started, I wanted to talk about my magazine that is being relaunched this month in June. I'm so excited. And then every month after. Some things you could look forward to in the magazine is makeup collabs, awesome social media influencer and beauty hacks and tips, some awesome recipes, and amazing places to go and visit in the Denver area, whether it be with you and your adult friends or your kids. Also, guys, I have a song that I released called Lifeline. It is live on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Um, So if you could use the sound, that would be amazing. And also, it is live on iTunes. And I'm going to play a little sample for you right now. Yeah, so I hope you guys like that. (laughs) Okay, so like, have you ever wondered why women are at each other's necks so much? Me too. I I never understood it. I never I never got it. But we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit into it today to see what's what's kind of going on here. So let's talk about facts, right? I pulled up some statistics on Google, and this is what they had to say. When it comes to bullying, research suggests that women are more likely to bully other women than men, choosing them as targets more than 70% of the time. Bullying can be seen as a violation of gender norms that expect women to be agreeable and passive. Um, like bombastic side eye. Then it says... As far as competition goes, women may compete with each other in ways that are less direct and more manipulative than men. For example, a 2016 study found that college women compete to show they've achieved feminine ideals in areas like relationships, consumerism, and perfection seeking. Women may also be less prepared than men to resolve conflicts with other women. Now, the last sentence I can't really agree with because (laughs) if you feisty, you feisty, and you don't care who it is, you will correct them. And I don't even know if the word is feisty. I feel like it's um, you stand on business. Now, like I said, I do want to remind you guys that this is Google's words, okay? Um, Let's get into workplace relationships. Google says, some women report having worse relationships with female colleagues and supervisors than with men. Women at higher higher leaderships levels may also display more male-specific EQ competencies like assertiveness and confidence and less female specific competencies like empathy and interpersonal relationships. This can lead to queen bee syndrome where women act more like men to fit in and appear tough. Okay, I feel like Google is trying to be a little controversial right now. Like I for real have a problem. Why would you do that? Why would you say that? Why? 
I have two feelings about this because I can totally see the whole queen bee <laughs> um, persona or syndrome. I have seen it where some women in the workplace where they have a position of like power, they take it and um, they use it to be manipulative and, and very mean and very div uh, dividing of the workplace. But I think now that we're all becoming very aware that men can also have quote unquote female tendencies, uh, this also happens when men in the workplace are a position of power. So, but I I can say from personal experience, uh, I I have been a woman of quote unquote power as a supervisor or manager, and I was the complete opposite of that. I let everybody have their space. I didn't helicopter anyone, but I do feel like my situation is a little bit different because I am a, a black woman um, that was in the place of work where I was a supervisor and um, let's just say nobody really took authority um, seriously when I was the one who was saying, you know, um, literally repeating guidelines that I did not make up that the company did. But that's a whole nother story. Okay, last but not least, it says internalized sexism. Women may internalize patriarchal messages that they're not as capable, strong, or competent as men. These messages can affect how women judge each other, leading them to underestimate, mistreat, or distance themselves from other women to gain power and standing with men. Now that I have seen, that's actually for me called pick me syndrome. There's always a chick looking for another chick to throw under the bus so that she can seem like she's ahead or on top of her game. And the other said female is actually slacking. Where I feel like men do this too, but not at this level of um, pick me. You know, it's more like, I, you know, men, I feel like it's like, I want more money and I want more power than that person. And I'm going to just like do what I can do and, and, you know, um, try to relate to this person as much as possible so I can learn how to, how to master at being better than them. And this is just my opinion. I don't know, man. Now I was able to find an, uh, interview that was done by Oprah, uh, where she interviewed a wonderful relationship expert by the name of Ayanla Van Zant. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And they talked about why women compete with each other. And I just wanted to break this video down um, as it's playing. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Start it. Here we go. I hope you guys can hear this. so mean to each other competition yeah. quickly take us through that well i think we talked about us earlier where i believe i'm programmed to believe that if you get it it's not there for me so i gotta take you down and prove how good i am by setting up how bad you are yeah. Prove how worthy I am oh, by gosh. setting up how unworthy you are. Yeah. So that way I'm going to get it. I'm going to win. See, it's easy to be a king among paupers. It's hard to be a king among kings. Yes. You understand? Mm. So a queen among queens. So if I make you look worse, then I get to be the queen. Absolutely. But to stand queen, you know, queen to queen with the girls perked up, okay? <laughs> that mm -hmm. takes a little more energy. Yes, I, I love this, what Malika just said. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that is so freaking true. Um, big purr energy is like what we call it now, right? Big purr, big, big purr energy. Big purr. <laughs> um, I noticed that a lot of women who are not confident in themselves or who are, who are not grounded, when they're in the room of other beautiful, confident um amazing women 
or even just women period it anybody who's literally not even trying like somebody who like may dress not even extravagant or not even be super outgoing these women these certain specific type of women still feel like they have to be the big cat in the room be the bigger cat the big the alpha cat in the room and i've experienced that myself where i'm very confident i love myself I love others, so I don't need to be the biggest, you know, um, or or put someone down and make them look, you know, whatever, so that I can be this big, high and mighty looking person. But I've I have witnessed that, so there is some truth in that. And on Twitter is not being a victim, but a good student. That's it. That is how we should good be approaching student Malika. Our- good student, Malika. Good student. Not being a victim, but being a good student. Which is what we're all here to do. Everybody gets that, right? When you look at this is a big earth school. That's and there are subjects that every you're day is not going to like. Mm-hmm. Even good students have subjects. I don't like math. Don't like it. But as I learned to value what I had, I figured counting would help. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy from England, your take on competition. Let's hear it, Lucy. Hi guys, um, Hi. it's funny talking about competition because I was at a reunion last year and of course part of that there was lots of swapping stories and updates for each other and I must confess I did find myself kind of comparing myself to what some of the other women there were saying and kind of thinking, oh goodness, how am I going to get the chance to say how good I am in all of this and I think back to it and there was an awful lot of peacocking going on actually and it just shows what an ugly emotion that is, yeah. that, you know, that jealousy that we were all there peacocking around and I don't want to be that girl, it's horrible. <laughs> Well, you know, comparison is an act of violence against the self. Uh, Comparison is an act. That's a tweet tweetable. Okay, an act of violence against the self. Wow. Wow, let me play that again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Comparison is an act. That's a tweet tweetable. Comparison. This queen said comparison is an act of violence towards self and that makes so much sense to me because you must really not like yourself um you must really be in a spot of insecurity a dark place when you feel the need to uh, i got this i know she got this but i got this but uh don't look over there look over here or just like comparing yourself because you think you're you're impressing other people, but what you're doing is you're drawing attention to yourself in wrong ways because it makes you look insecure because it's a violence of yourself. It's just your insecurities shining through, babes. An act of violence against the self. Well, I'll tweet that. Because whenever you say <laughs> that who I am as I am Active is violence. less than who you are as you are, then it sets it up in the ego that I need to do something about my authentic being, which God already did. So we really want to be mindful of that. That's good. That'll keep you from peacocking. It'll make you a nice little quail. Just go on. (laughs) I love this message. And now it's time for some thoughtful poetry. Poetic justice at your service. All right, you guys, I wrote a poem for all my women out there that may be struggling a little bit uh, right now in these times. I do not have it memorized. So uh, if you could excuse me as my eyes are facing this way. And I guess to the people on Spotify, this won't matter at all, huh? Here we go. Queens to my left and queens to my right. I'll never fight you against the grain out of spite. The way you walk in and light up a room is hella tight. And respectfully, I kind of want to try and take a bite. Just kidding, beautiful cherry blossom tree. I'll be polite. But for real, your skin is glowing and your heart shines so very bright. Please don't ever feel like you ain't enough or can't get a guy. It's the guy or girl who can't get you because you hella fly. Deserve to be flued out and draped in designer. Keep your head up, little mama. Life's gonna look like you and get more finer over time. Million dollar baby in her prime. (laughs) 
I hope you ladies enjoyed that. All right, guys. Well, I think it's time to get into my opinions. Yeah. It's time. It's time. We're going to go ahead and get into my opinions on what I feel and what I think about all of the things that um, wrap up this topic, right? Okay. Well, first things first, right? I kind of want to start off by talking about and listing examples of what being a girl's girl looks like. What does that entail? So one example of that would be showing up for all women, all women around you, um, especially when they give you flowers too. I think it's important to um, be aware of exactly who around you is giving you your flowers. And there's nothing more um, disheartening when you are giving your get you're giving someone their flowers like oh you're doing an amazing job you're awesome constantly doing that and then realizing that they they're not giving you any they're not they're not telling you you're doing a good job they're not even acknowledging you period and you're like what are you talking about Daya so for example right um I do makeup looks and I'm kind of into the makeup world now and I've met all types of people from different walks of life and so that being said I am a a beginner and I know people who are more of like on the expert level well I also know people who like are on the same level as me or just a little bit better you know I know people of all different levels on the makeup tip and I ran into this issue multiple times where I would give flowers to, you know, a fellow makeup artist, whether they are an expert, whether they're, you know, a beginner, doesn't matter. I still give them their flowers and crickets. And then of course that made me wonder like, is it, is it me? Did I say something? But then I saw, and cause I'm very observant people don't think I am, but I am. Um, I'm very observant and I would see the same girls that I'm giving flowers to giving flowers to the girls in their clique or girls that they didn't hear anything about or girls that they don't really know or whatever. Right. I just saw them showing up in other people's comments um, under other people's posts and artwork and they were not showing up in mine. And unfortunately that caused me to think and question my artwork. Like, is it good enough? Like what's happening? But really it was just as I, I feel like it was just a sense of jealousy. Um or hearing something about me that they didn't care to, you know, ask, is this true? Like, you know, um, or anything like that. They just developed this beef or a weird hate towards me and um never communicated that or you know and but would take the compliments will take the compliments with no problem but will not show up for you and i would like to say like all of these kind of surround respecting the girl code you know like not trying to talk to or sleep with any girls i mean i'm sorry any uh dudes that girls or dudes that your friend is interested in like little things like that right but anyways the next thing that i think makes you look like a girl's girl is not gatekeeping when you know it could help others or change someone's life For another example, once again, for the makeup world, um, I just I found myself coming across people who um, I could tell easily did not want to share tips or tricks or anything like that with or spend the time of day of talking to a regular regular human on how to be better with their makeup. Because either they didn't want them to get better than them at some point in time or whatnot, like that's that's I've experienced that right Um, where. I ask somebody, hey, where did you get this? And they're just like, ah, you'll never know or something stupid like that, right? Um, 
<laughs> but then I've met the opposite. I've dealt with people who are like, girl, let me put you on game. Let me tell you how to do your makeup like this. Let me tell you, you know, um, how to even out the paint and, and blend um, your eyeshadow. Let me tell you, let me show you where I got these products for only a dollar. Okay, there are people out there that don't gatekeep. There are people out there that had have gotten great job opportunities, employment opportunities, and share that with the fellow um, single mothers or mothers who want to work from home. Those women are the goats. Okay, y'all are the goats. When y'all don't go keep anything and share and help fellow single or non-single women, y'all deserve all of the love. Okay. This is another big one for me. Protecting other people's integrity by speaking up or walking away when they are being talked about behind their backs. Womp womp. Nah, because this is really important. That right there in itself is so important, okay? You're, <laughs> it's important because when someone is not there to defend themselves, when someone's t when a group of people or two people are talking about them or someone else is talking about them to you how is that fair how is that fair so when somebody's talking about someone else in front of you and they're like you know I can't stand such and such because she just she's so weird or she's so whatever whatever and you're sitting there um and you continue to stay there and you don't say anything or you don't walk away, um, newsflash, you're just as bad as them, babes. You're just as bad as them because that just proves that you have no acknowledgement to the fact that if they have no problem talking about this person to each other in front of you, they don't have a problem talking about you, okay, when you're not around, so I feel like a lot of females don't realize like their silence in these situations are very much the same as talking ish because you're not defending that person. And even if you feel like that person doesn't deserve being defended, you can walk away and walking away looks like, oh, you know, I got to go do something real quick. Oh, oh I'm really busy. Or, oh, I got to go take care of something. And then you should probably go reevaluate the friends that you have, babes. Because, like I said, if they can just talk about somebody like that, anybody, anybody, I don't care if it's somebody I don't like. If somebody's talking about them, what is the point? Why are, this doesn't serve me? This conversation doesn't serve me. I don't like that person, but you're not about to get me to say something out of my mouth to first of all bring disturb my peace and disturb the peace that I want to come to me you're not going to do that um, and also you're not going to switch up my words and you know whatever I say even if I say oh god bless them you know it is what it is you're still going to take what I say and 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 switch it up and make it be whatever you want it to be anyway so get yourself some new friends if they do that around you mm -hmm. Which brings me to the infamous word gossip. Can't stand gossiping. Gossiping is a no-no. Gossiping is a no-no. It's a trap. It's a trap to believe you need others to validate what you are what you are already feeling. What you are feeling, you need others to validate it. When really you should, um, you should, you know, confront the person that you're having issues with you should be able to confront them and address them um if you have a grievance because um this prevents people being able to put words in your mouth that's exactly what i was saying and y'all think i'm kidding like my own mother would be pissed at my older sister and come to me or call me and be like <laughs> hey, like, can you believe what Kel said? Can you believe what da da da? And I'm just like, um, I don't, I don't, 
know what this conversation is but i feel like you deserve better and that little bit right there you i feel like you deserve better would turn into she said that you treat me like this and you just like this and this and that and you 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 none of me at all and um sadea said that you you be bugging and it's like i didn't say none of that ma'am i said I simply said you deserve better and what you do and y'all both deserve better. Everybody deserves better. Okay. So it's just like, that is an example. And I'm not going to lie. Like I actually recently just stopped doing this, like stopped falling into this trap. Um, because there's another way, there's another form of gossiping where it's like, like I was saying earlier, um, where even if it seems like it's innocent gossiping, I've had times where I've um, went to someone else, you know, to say like, hey, I'm having this problem with, you know, this person. Am I bugging? Like, what's going on? And, you know. Not really, not realizing I'm putting that other person, that other party in a, in a weird, awkward position because they know that other person. And so it's like you put that you put your friends in positions of having to pick a side or say something. And so I feel like that's not fair. And so gossiping, even even if you feel like even if you're doing it like in a sinister way or a non-sinister way, like my way I feel like was non-sinister because I was really trying to figure out if I was seeing things or if I was bugging on how this person was interacting with me um, and ask someone else. But really, I should have been addressing the other person like, hey, do we have a problem? So now I just fall back from that altogether. I just meditate on it. I think on it. And then I address the person. And then if that person's a healthy mindset person, they will talk, talk me through it. Talk to me about it. We'll work it through. And if they're a toxic person, then they'll have a problem with me coming to them. So, yeah. All right. And now it's time to talk about things that make you not look like a girl's girl's babe. All right, so sis, what's the tea? I got you here. Let's see. My goodness. Okay, so things to make you not seem like a girl's girl. So, um, if you do these things that I list, uh, you are a said hater, um, and not a girl's girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, babes. You should probably reevaluate what you're doing. Um, so this says <laughs> when you follow someone but not share engage or acknowledge any of their work progresses or anything good happening in their life hell and even if if you don't acknowledge any of the bad but more points if you only acknowledge the bad and none of the good po- things that are happening in this person's life to then turn around and like shamelessly um run to other people's pages that you both follow right you know that these people you guys follow the same people and you show up there you show up there and not show up in the other person's page that you follow It's giving weirdo sitting in a van. Why sit here and play reindeer games of having me be your follower, your supporter, me giving you your flowers, and then you're not even following me back, liking anything else? And it's funny because some girls I feel like have come to me to tell me not to give up or not stop doing what I'm doing just to have competition because... When I say I want to give up, they're just like, no, don't do that. And then it's just like, okay, so then where are you? Where are you in my life? I don't see you. You see me, but I don't see you. Or even when you're always running to their comments and putting posts like, dang, girl, you slayed or you look good and or, you know, you look bomb. And I mean, like countless posts, they don't respond or they do respond like, oh, nah, nah, thank you. You know, just to look good to the public and then but not show up in your spaces. These people are icky. These people are not girls, girls. Ooh, here's a really good one. When you're not a girl's girl, if 
you keep walking the other way when you clearly see another woman being assaulted or also when you victim shame. This falls under that whole pick me syndrome. No other woman, right? If we're supposed to be beings of like nurturing and like a, like a safe space, right? Um, no woman should ever, ever, ever walk away when they see another like see another woman being assaulted or uh giving off i feel uncomfortable vibes i i've all i every time i come across a woman that's like at a bar or you know out um in public and she just looks very physically uncomfortable all it takes is a hey you good you know hey you know i like your outfit is everything all right like, you know, um, something like that. Or, hey, girl, like acting like you know them to not make it obvious. Anything is better than nothing. Your silence does not help here. And this is why us women say we choose the bear because even other women don't really be safe spaces for us sometimes. And can we and can we stop with this victim shaming? Um it's, it's, it's disheartening when I hear other women say, you know, when, when someone's speaking about the abuse that they went through with their, you know, spouse, their ex-spouse, whatever, um, all you hear is, why didn't you leave? Why didn't you leave? And every time I hear that, I want to ask that person, may God, may help praying to God that your daughter never has to be in that situation where you want to ask her why did she not leave but you can't because you see the sheer pain and distraughtness in her eyes that you didn't see before because you know your daughter didn't go through it but so I hope and pray that your daughter never does because I always say people don't ever under, understand, understand, have empathy, have sympathy for somebody's situation unless someone close to them experienced it. And that has got to stop. And then last but definitely not least, um, being a pick me, <laughs> like I said before, um, embarrassing. It's embarrassing. OK, and throwing em, embarrassing and throwing other women under the bus for the sake of being seen by other men is extremely sad, babes. I'd get help because um, you don't need to be the biggest cat, the biggest vibe in the room. We can all be big vibes in the room together. We can all do it. I promise. I promise. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do my one minute rant of how I feel about this. What's on your mind, Daya? Get it out. All right. What do I think? What do I got to say under a minute? Okay. If you're having issues, just go get help, babes. It's okay. Be like Harley Quinn and Ivy, okay? We are all queens and we can freaking do this. We can do this and we can love each other. Also like Harley and Ivy. I mean, what is stopping you from going to that girl's page that you, you know, think you don't, you don't really like her artwork, right? You don't really like her artwork. You're just like, damn, this stuff sucks. But like, she totally deserves a little push. I dare you. You might just get inspired by somebody who's less talented than you. Who would have thought? oh my god and and then the support you want support you want support right yeah 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 Child, okay you ain't even that funny whatever okay so um <laughs> on a more serious note right um moral of the story is guys we can all eat we can all be successful but it takes a village and a village isn't just your five girlfriends that you go on live with every now and again okay a village is people that you don't know people you do know and in between okay so let's drop the mean girl mentality of um 
not giving people flowers that give you flowers you know not you don't no one has to support you no one has to support you and I do want to you know remind everyone of that right even myself no one me sitting here right no one has to support anyone but my thing is at a certain point of time when someone is giving you flowers or um, loving on you And you but you also run to platforms and complain how you are struggling with people who don't love on you. It looks terrible because there are people who do love on you and do care about you. But you're so focused on the women that are popular or that um, hold value based off of um, their artwork or their talent and their numbers and it's it's very sad because (laughs) little people like me where um even like I have a lot of followers but I'm not the best at makeup and I feel like people hate me for that as well and then like it shows in how they don't show up in any of my spaces but I'm always showing up in theirs and so um It's just very important to be mindful and be aware of what you're doing because that does um, end up being very obvious when you do it because you you do it to one person and then you that um, then you do it to another person and then you do it to another person. And then next thing you know, you just nonchalantly are around here looking very insecure and people catch on and people notice and then they just they they leave you alone. So um, that being said, just it doesn't take it takes two seconds to go to someone who you wouldn't re- you know regularly go support and just pour some love on them, to be honest, for sure. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up this episode of Bombastic views <laughs> i hope you guys had a blast i hope you enjoyed this topic please feel free to send me topics um i'm going to attach my email so that you guys can do so but please send me topics i should cover um and also if you want to be a guest um appearance on my podcast i absolutely do that so please 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 don't be afraid to just email us at Variety Views, V A R I E T Y <laughs> Views, V I E W Z at gmail.com. And like I said, I will also attach that so you guys can do so. Um, but yeah, feel free to send us requests for topics and also if you want to be on the show. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's a wrap, guys. Stay tuned for more. One on that love tip, hell no, you get some About my face with all that wet stuff You really trying to sell me on Must be popping way too many pills You need to leave them things alone Oh, you're calling I'm not falling for it this time You can beg and plead Get on